Hello and welcome. This is Reddit Tosker. And today I want to talk about the Vigor stat in Elden Ring. Because I notice some of you guys aren't leveling it. I recently put out a community post. And in it, I asked people how much Vigor they were running. And some of the answers that I got were really eye-opening. What I saw was huge swaths of respondents running around with barely any Vigor. And at a relatively high level. With the best ones being a couple of people at level 70 with 16 Vigor, that then proceeded to complain about the game one-shotting them. Just for context, 16 Vigor is not much more than what you would have as a level 1 wretch. Wretches start out at 414 HP, and at 16 Vigor you have 547. It is not a surprise that you're getting one shot. And so this video is going to focus on why pumping Vigor, especially early on, is such a good idea. Alright, let's get started. First of all, it's actually also not surprising that people would fall into this trap. In Dark Souls 3, you could get away with low vigor for pretty much most of the game. Compared to Elden Ring, things simply do not do as much damage, even at the end game of Dark Souls 3 in comparison to the end game of Elden Ring. And the reason for this is because Dark Souls 3 is a significantly shorter game. Even if you went out of your way to explore everything and pick up all the items you could find and really dig into all the content, it was very unlikely that you would even hit level 80 by the time that you finished the game. You would have to go out of your way and grind a lot to go much higher than that in a new game. But in Elden Ring, if you go out and explore and try and do all the content, leveling up in an organic way, you're very unlikely to finish the game in anything under level 120 to 130. And I think I might be lowballing it there. Because the game is so much longer, towards the end of Elden Ring, the enemies will start doing damage that's comparable to what enemies would be doing in New Game Plus for Dark Souls. And so the game expects that you'll start leveling Vigor in response to the increase in damage. Because Elden Ring isn't a typical RPG, all your stats don't go up each level. For the most part, you're still just as susceptible at getting one-shotted at level 1 as you are at level 30 if you don't increase your Vigor. Now, you can tell that Elden Ring has taken into account the increased length of the game and the much higher level that you'll end up at, because the stat soft caps work differently. In Dark Souls 3, the damage soft cap was usually around 40, with another soft cap at around 60. But in Elden Ring, the damage soft caps are around 60, and then another more severe soft cap will happen at around 80. And the HP soft caps will be at around 40, with a second soft cap at around 60, which is much higher than it ever was before in Dark Souls. Now for context, just to see how much health a little bit of Vigor can give you, let's take a look at some numbers. At Vigor level 30, you have 994 HP. If you increase that to Vigor level 40, you'll have a whopping 1,450 HP. For a measly 10 levels, you get 456 HP. That's almost half of what you had at level 30 Vigor. Those 10 levels added half of your total HP bar to your HP bar. Now let's take a look at those people that were running around with 16 Vigor at the beginning of the video. 16 Vigor will give you 547, which means that people playing at 16 Vigor have a third of the HP of people that play at 40 Vigor. So it's not a surprise that they're having trouble dealing with the high amounts of damage that enemies do later in the game. To be honest, I think it would be bad game design if they weren't having trouble dealing with the high level of damage. Everybody wants to be the dodge and parry king, but if you can do it comfortably without worrying about your Vigor, then that would either make the Vigor stat entirely pointless, or actually it could make it completely overpowered. Because if you can comfortably deal with the enemy damage at level 16 Vigor, then someone that's running three times your HP is going to think that this game is a joke. Finally, let me get to the last reason why pumping Vigor is a really good idea. It's because you're not going to be a glass cannon for most of the game. Because most of your damage comes from your weapon upgrades, not your stats, until much later. The reason that this happens is because the amount that your stats have an effect on your weapon increases as you upgrade the weapon. And so low upgraded weapons have very poor scaling. And even once they start getting decent scaling, you aren't going to be doing huge amounts of damage by neglecting your vigor. Let me show you what I mean. Let's assume you want to be a glass cannon and you're level 70. And so you leave your Vigor at 16. You have a plus 17 Keen Uchigatana, which is around what you would have at that level. 
and you've chosen to neglect all your other stats in favor of damage. And so you've poured everything into dexterity, putting you at 72 dexterity. Well, in this situation, you're running around with 547 HP and a weapon that does 443 damage. And that's a pretty good amount of damage. But let's assume that you don't do that, and instead you decide to level up your HP and then pour the rest of it into your weapon. In this situation, with a plus 17 Keen Uchikatana, you are running around with 1450 HP and 392 damage. In this situation, you have around three times as much health and you're doing about 12% less damage. Now this is different for mages. Some of their spells are so powerful that they actually are glass cannons, but for most melee builds, doing something like that isn't going to make you a glass cannon, it's just going to make you glass. And you'll still be doing comparable damage to non-glass builds. Anyway, that's the end of this video. As always, thank you very much for watching.